team between Vaquith and Lulzri. Lulzri. So, round of 16 game here between Vaquith and Lulzri. Vaquith, a Protoss player. Lulzri, a Zerg player. Each of these gentlemen has won two games previously and are now into the round of 16. So let's take a look here. For those of you not aware, this is a regular tournament held by the good people of Reddit's StarCraft subreddit. It's a weekly tournament, totally open. Feel free to check it out, reddit.com subreddit. It's got all the information on the right side of the page. And uh, also weekly, we have a King of the Hill tournament on Sunday, which will be tomorrow, and a variety of European tournaments that I don't usually follow, even though I could because I'm probably up late at night most of those nights anyways. <clears throat> so far, we have got Lulzri as the Zerg player up top, and we have got Vaquith as the Protoss player down below. We are on Steps of War, really close map. And... Uh, like I said, Zerg versus Protoss matchup. I, I, you know, I feel like it's a pretty balanced game for the most part. A lot of Zerg players will disagree with me and say, "No, Sentries and Stalkers and Colossus is unbeatable." And yeah, it's kind of a pain in the ass, but you know, a lot of stuff Zerg can do seems just as harsh from Protoss's perspective. So it'll be interesting to see. Um, right away, we got uh, Pylon going out there, and Vaquith is going to start with that first scout on nine. And we've got Lulzri up here going straight into, let's see, you've got, yep, okay, so he went Overlord 9 and uh, Drone on 10, which is pretty much, for those Zerg players out there who are always wondering what, what's the best opening, pretty much if you're going for a pool that is later than 12, you want to get a Overlord on 9 and then a first, and then a your 10th worker on 10, basically. So it's it's just mathematically slightly better. I think you benefit by, you know, 10 or 15 minerals or something to that effect, but... Uh, for anyone who was curious on that, I know a lot of basic questions are always, how do I get those first, you know, ten workers? What do I do with it? So, that seems to work best. Uh, Lulzri's going to be out here chomping away on Vaquith's scout. Uh, Vaquith trying, probably trying to read and see if he's doing an early expo or not. He's already up to 15 workers, and I'd expect a gas right about now, and there it is. Thank you for making me seem slightly clairvoyant. Typically, you want to get a gas on 15, and then bam, right into a pool. So, this is going to be a typical uh, early speedling army. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean a rush, it doesn't necessarily mean anything more than you just want speedlings to defend. So, a little bit of poking around going out here in the middle with the uh, scouts. Overlords floating around, and we've got a gateway in the front here. Didn't quite catch the timing on that. I'm assuming it was like a, let's take a look at that, probably a 12 gateway. Second piling going up, a simulator going up, still chrono boosting workers. Got a little bit of chrono boost saved up here. So we'll see how this is going to go. Uh, both players are well aware of each other's build orders so far. Nothing's coming out of the gateway so far. There we go. We want to see a Zealot there. We want to see a Cybernetics Core here. Standard build. And we've got the spawning pool coming in. Nothing else. Is he saving money? He's got about 200 bucks, but doesn't look like he's going to expand. Nope. So he immediately got the queen out, and he's going to have to go... There we go. <laughs> he opted for the extractor trick right as the overlord popped, so it didn't seem to matter anyways. A lot of times I like to go 17 out of 18 supply, start my queen, and then extractor trick the queen in, so I'm 19 out of 18 supply. It's kind of a fun idea. But, um... Uh, interesting. Interesting, anyways. So, um, I'm surprised, frankly, that we haven't seen speed research yet. I wonder if he forgot, or I wonder if, uh, you know, ah, Roach Warren, so there we go. And i got to say, though, I disagree with this. I think if you're going to get Roaches, you get speed anyways. Get speed as fast as you can, because one of the best early game armies is Roaches backed by speedlings. And at some point, you're going to build emergency lings, and you're going to wish they had speed. So I really want to see this upgrade, even if he's planning on going all in Roaches. That's my criticism here. Taking care of the gas deal with the two zealots down here, researching the warp gate. Uh, still a single gate build, uh, one sentry out there. Now I'm getting curious. Two gas, one gateway with a sentry out there. That tells me I'm walling off and I'm building uh, void rays. Just a random guess here. He could very well throw down three gates out of nowhere. He certainly has the money for it. He's got 400 bucks saved up, 500 bucks saved up. So we'll see where this is going to go. But uh, like I said, you know, if if you've read up on like the like the five the five roach push or whatever, which is what this looks exactly like, you'll see that he's got that hundred gas and he's got the hundred minerals left over. You research your you research your uh, metabolic boost right away. Interesting spine crawler. Um, you get your five roaches. You send your roaches across the map to attack, and then you just build a bunch of speedlings from that point out. And the roaches just punch through the door, kind of like a banding bust. And then the speedlings clean everything up. And uh, you're always going to regret not having this metabolic boost. Sorry to harp on that so much, but that's my take. Expansion going up. Curious that the spine crawler is going up here. I don't even think he needs that, to be honest. Like I said, would have rather seen the speed upgrade, but. Um, and we're moving along here. So let's see. No, he's got a gateway robo facility. 
Okay, he's just got a lot of money in the bank. Who knows? Maybe he's not being clever. Maybe he's just being sloppy with his money. We'll see. But these roaches are going to punch right through this very quickly. Easily taking down uh, both of these zealots here. Easily going to take down this sentry. I mean, at this point, this is a almost a win. Uh, let's see how quickly he can warp in some stalkers. They'll help out a little bit, but he's going to be in trouble. Take out the weak one. Take out the weak one. Focus fire. Okay, okay, he'll do okay. But now, just imagine right now, just imagine 12 speedlings come running in right now. That would be game over right now. If he had the speed upgrade and just built speedlings, this would be a game over situation right now. He just missed out on that opportunity completely. Instead, he lost his five roaches and wasn't able to capitalize on it all. So there's my criticism, but alas. Again, I also have the benefit of sitting above all of this and just kind of watching it. Because uh, Vquith is definitely not spending his money too much. He's got way too much money. He's got 600, 700 minerals and 500 gas, so let's let's really see this. At first, I read into that and I said, oh, clearly he's going something tricky. But no, I, I think he's just not spending very efficiently. Sorry to give criticism all over the place here. Three spine crawlers moving up. Lulzari, I think, being needlessly defensive. I think he, he absolutely could have won the game right now. Absolutely could have just rushed in there with a bunch of links, had he researched speed off the bat, he had the money for it, oh well. So, now we get to watch and see what else is happening here, so. I uh, do like that he's connecting this. I mean, the, the nice part about this is, uh, if you have any Day9 fans here, Day9 wrote a wonderful paper called The Marginal Advantage, and I cite it whenever I can, it's a great academic paper, and it was all about how, when you're playing at a high level, it's new, newbie to try and expect to win big i.e. Just, just keep getting small advantages and keep capitalizing on the small advantages until you finally win guaranteed as opposed to risking everything and winning big. So, Not that I, th I think that he actually could have won big right there, but that's okay. Because you'll see that even though he didn't capitalize on that with a bunch of speedlings and win the game right away, he moved into a very defensible position. He's got the advantage, he's got board control, and he's got economic, uh, economic advantage. Um... Should have had a second queen by now, though. Surprised to see that. Hydralis Den, that's pretty standard. And uh, Roach Warren, so. Got the Gleal reconstitution going on. Uh, he's staying on top of his supply. He's spending his money very well, so he's in a good position here. Um, no problem with that. I, I just think he's being too defensive, honestly, but who knows? We'll see how this goes. And now we've got the giant push. Now that he's got all of his gateways in line, Vaquith has got a big fat push going here. And. Might turn this right around into a victory if, if uh, Lulzari is not too careful here. And now, let's pull up the production tab and see. Does he panic and build a whole bunch of links? If he does, he's going to wish they had speed upgrades. And there we have it, folks. I think, I hate to be right, but damn, that would have been fantastic to have a billion speedlings right then. And it would have been fantastic to have a billion speedlings early on. All of the workers get shielded off. Oh my god. Oh, and it's over for Lulzari. And the game just.